Hi. Good morning. This is Thorn Holder from Top 15. And I'm presenting to you today a new channel of mine. It's called the Top 15 Advice. And it will encompass every piece of advice for every situation. That means it's endless because, you know, I cannot gather all, all the advice for every situation and present it to you. So this is an open thing. This is ongoing and uh, it has the potential to be very large because, you know, as, as we are growing as a community, as a society, technologically, um, we see that there are many reasons for the know-how and for the instructor instructing the know-hows or teaching or showing or talking about your own experiences so if you're a diver and you went to dive in Aruba and you had an experience that was very unique uh, whether it be positive or negative and you would like to share with someone then you could write write to me and I will put it up there on, on my list so I have a list of things that I want to start with today to kick off this series and these are the top 15 things I'm going to start off with a bang. These are the top 15 things to have an enjoyable life. Or the top 15 things to be successful. Or the top 15 things to achieve your dreams. So let's get in. The first thing is, number one is, feel good now. Feel good now. It's real important to just be enjoying now. Okay? So if you're not feeling good, let's just say I'm feeling a little bit hungry. Well, if I want to be really successful and really happy as much as I can, then instead of trying to work with this feeling of hunger, I would go grab something to eat real quick so that I could feel good now to get rid of that hunger or thirst and feel good now. So that's the first thing. Number one is to feel good now. Number two is aim to feel better. Okay? So if you're feeling real good, don't just settle. That's going to become real bored. Okay? If your body's feeling good, great. You may not have to do anything to eat or rest or so on, okay? But always be aiming to feel better. So I feel great now. What can I do to be a little, to feel a little bit better, okay? And it might be working on a big project that takes years to accomplish, but you, you're feeling better every day, every day that you're working at it. So one, to feel good now. Two, to aim to feel better. Number three, be a student of every moment. That's real important. Some of the wisest people in the world, they are that way because in every moment, they're a student. It's an experiment. They're learning. to use using their past experiences, the current situation, and infinite intelligence to make a decision. Okay? So, be a student of every moment. When you are a student, your attention is directed into the now. When your attention is directed into the now... <laughs> That's when you come through, you who you are as a, you know, as a, a being that's bigger than this body. And while you are coming through, then you see that you is attached to something. <laughs> and that's the, the bigger, big man. Some people say God or whatever, but it's a force. It's not just a force. It's a great force, um, but it's not a person. You know, we, we see human beings in their body and we associate God as a man made out of light with a gray beard, with a rod, lightning and rah, God. Well, God is much more complicated than that and much more simpler, much simpler at the same time. So be a student of every moment. The next thing is, and this is number four, be ready to change. Be really, really ready to change, okay? It's a problem that you will have if you have attachments. So if you are attached to a concept, an idea, or a belief, and you are presented with some new information, some new facts, or some new consideration, then you would be disinclined to explore this new area, this new piece of fact or information, because you have already found your truth. Your truth has a, a ceiling and you found that and you have, a, you have anchored yourself to it or that belief or that religion or that person or that feeling. Whatever it is you've anchored yourself to, it could prevent you from growing and changing. Like a snake or a reptile, in order to grow, it needs to get out of its old skin because the old skin is too limiting. Another analogy is a cup. 
if you have a cup and it's really full right you, you're not gonna be able to put anything in there okay so your cup must consistently have little holes at the bottom not massive holes but small ones so that as information comes in it could be processed you could use it and then it could leak out remember once you use the information you own it you become it you don't have to keep it there as a belief as something you you're rigid about use the info and allow it to go it's like a tool every piece of knowledge wisdom or religion that you pass through is like a tool to make you better to make you wiser to make you enjoy and grow so have little holes at the bottom of your glass so that you could constantly be adding new information not to keep not to attach and say oh this is mine i know this no but so that you're continuously learning from info and experiences and keep the process going until your body evaporates <clears throat> the other thing is to <laughs> is to be careful and this is number five be careful of what you put into your mind you know be careful of the subliminal messages and the stuff that you listen and watch and be careful of who your leaders are who your mentors are and why do you like them sometimes you might have a mentor that may be really successful in one thing and the reason that he's really really successful you may not know that but you may be seeing his success and this other thing that is not causing his success his success or her success and you may be associating this with his success it's not the case okay people that are very successful have a lot of quirky habits a lot of weird habits that they do that sometimes they don't even know okay i'm in the process right now of talking to a good friend of mine really successful guy um shaka some of you guys may know to try to just talk with him about because this is my work coming to understand success he's been very successful but uh you know some people just haven't organized it into a list of 15 things but they all have things as i'm researching that they do they all do it and it's easy to them oh i do that oh yeah i, I read four books a month yeah i do that yeah, I go to bed at 10. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I meditate. Things like these. You find it very common that very successful people have these habits. Number six, do not be attached to reality or practicality. Because what is real or what is practical is only existing in the past. For, for example, I could fly away. It's very unlikely because it hasn't been happening frequently but because uh, there are laws that supersede gravity and there are laws that we don't know about that we could use, then why limit yourself to say, oh, this is real? Oh, it's real that you, if you're five foot seven, you can't be a, a runway model. That's not real. That's a statistic, okay? That's an opinion. That's a probability. You could change that probability. So do not restrict yourself to facts or reality. Those are opinions that are it should be just built on and built on or discarded, added, discarded, look at the next fact, discard, look at the next fact. You should never hold on to them. None, none, none. I mean, zero. Some people say, oh, we know, we know some things. No, you don't know anything. Okay, you know nothing. As soon as you know something, you, you your glass is, is, boom, that's something that's staying in your glass. You put another thing, boom, you say you know that, boom, your glass is half full already. You know another thing? Boom, your glass is full. You can't know anything else. You're ignorant. You stop growing. Okay? So, do not be attached to anything because it limits what could get into your glass. So, it limits your growth. The other thing is, <clears throat> what we could measure or observe. Okay? So, if you could observe or measure something, then you could use your observation. But some people discard their measurement and observation for another person's measurement or observation. A real classic example of this is the shape and operation of where we live, this earth or the place that we live on, okay? I think it's real rubbish that people just accept one group of people's story or, or, or nonsense about, about where we live, you know. Um, it does not feel like I'm moving a thousand miles an hour. 
okay and uh, I've been on an aircraft and now even though at its, its cruising altitude might be 33,000 feet it's still affected by the material it comes across with wind and water and and other things you know it's still affected so it's amazing that for years our spaceship or our earth has moved at spinning at a thousand miles an hour and moving at 565,000 miles an hour that it's not affected by anyway so what can we measure okay what could you test for yourself okay and let that be a reason to move away from belief systems that existed before you were born or that existed outside of your ability to observe. If you cannot observe it, then you don't know. And if you can't observe it, then you're learning. The other thing is, number, uh, number eight, think only of what you enjoy. And this is really important. The reason why this is important is that a lot of people include into, into their future probabilities of things that they don't like. So somebody would say to me, oh, you better buckle up because you might get into an accident. And I say, no, I'm not going to get into an accident. I buckle up so you shut up. But as far as my life, then I don't enjoy vehicular accidents, okay? I don't enjoy being hurt and having broken legs and my car being destroyed. So as I think about things and as I do things, I do it with the confidence that, hey, this is what I enjoy, this is what I look at. The probabilities of things occurring and happening with me or the probabilities of things that come into my life are directly related to what I want. Um, number nine, project your intentions. Okay, so whatever you want to do, project it into the universe. How do you do that? Your brain is a, it's like an antenna and a receiver at the same time. It broadcasts and it receives. Okay, so you could broadcast thoughts and intentions into the world. Um, you could give those thoughts and intentions great momentum by doing it over and over, by broadcasting every day. So every get up, every day you get up, you're like, oh, this is what I'm doing. This is my goal. This is my dream. This is my vision. I'm going to broadcast this into the universe and I'm going to enjoy the process of getting it. Okay, so broadcast your, yourself uh, and project your, your intention into the universe, into the world. And by thinking about it with, with, with great desire, great enthusiasm, uh, by believing that it's going to happen because you're excited about it, you know it's going to happen, it's already yours, um, and, and take action, take action daily. I have a book called, two books actually, one is called The Law of Sevens, the other one is called The Next Seven. The Next Seven talks about when an idea comes into your mind or when you have an intention, the next seven seconds is really important. And then the next seven minutes, next seven uh, hours, next seven days, what are you going to do? How are you going to create momentum for your desire or for your idea? Are you going to allow somebody else to take your idea? So that when you see it on the telly or on your computer, be like, oh, I thought of it. But what did you do about it? What type of momentum did you create so that your thoughts could turn into, into a tangible thing? Okay, this was once a tangible idea, uh, uh, an idea in the head. They put some materials and some people together and they created a remote, you know. It's an idea. That's all it is. It has to, had to be conceptualized. It's not going to, matter is not going to evolve into this. That's why we have consciousness. <laughs> we have animals evolve into other types of animals in the same species. We do not evolve. We, our bodies may evolve the same way. But as far as our creative process, our creative ability, this is how we evolve. We use materials. Just like the brain is made up of thoughts, and thoughts are like materials. So you bring thoughts and ideas together, you bring materials together, and then you bring people together, then you bring materials together again. All right? So project your intentions, man. That's number nine. A couple more. Okay. Observe what is working. Um, this is for folks that have an intention of being involved in commerce. Okay? Um, See what is working today. It's very easy to go online and say, what are the, the top musicians or the top singers, the top DJs? Find them, find out what's working for them, and top it. Or use their basic techniques and add a twist of your own. It's very simple. It's not very easy. 
You see, it's simple, but it's not easy. It takes, and it's the, the difficult part is to start the habit. The difficult part is to really say, oh, today I'm going to make a decision to do it now. You know, my first book that I'm publishing is called Do It Now. And the reason is one of my main hindrance in life and has been is procrastination. Okay. The act of living under the Parkinson's law. If I could do it tomorrow, well, I'm going to just play today and do it tomorrow. No, do it today and play for the rest of today and tomorrow. Okay. So do it now. Do it now. Observe what is working. Observe the law of attraction and how it works. Use it to your advantage. Attract things into your life by taking action now. As soon as you take action to what you want, then whatever you want starts coming closer to you. Remember, what you want wants you. What you want really, really wants to connect with you. It really wants, because it is you. It already is you. It wants to enjoy you like you enjoy it. So what you desire, oh man, that, that shit is in love with you. Okay. Number 11, create habits of good momentum. So one of the habits that I created was to be a real good student because that habit could be applied to anything. So I have a camera here. So I'm going to learn some things about photography, some professional things. I'm going to take a workshop, a three-hour class. I'm going to keep learning and learning and learning. In a month time, if I put 40 minutes a day into photography, in a month time, I'd be a pretty, pretty good photographer. In five days, you could be a pretty good artist. Okay, there's some techniques online that you could use to be really, really good. So really create habits, not just habits in your field. Like I'm a soccer player. I'm not just going to be like, oh, I'm going to do some sit-ups. And that'll be good. No, I'm going to get a habit that causes me to do every single exercise and even exercises of the mind. Okay, so develop habits that will take care of the forming of other habits. So don't just work on like a simple superficial habit. Like, oh, I'm going to drink a glass of water every day. That's great. Every, every eight hours, every three hours. That's great. But develop a habit that causes you to want to do other healthy things as well. So the water is good, but aim on the habit that gets you to eat good meat, fish, you know, and, and so on. Okay? Um, number 12, continue to think. Be a thinking person. Be critical. Do not accept any information as fact or, you know, be, if you, if you feel good, say, okay, I like how that feels. I'm, I'm a, I'm a have this fact or whatever in my feeling for a while. I'm going to use the tool. Okay, but I'm gonna keep thinking. I'm gonna keep going on in the process of analysis and learning and building on the thing that already exists. Okay, so continue to think. Um, there's something that I call action moments. What an action moment is, is an opportunity where you see an old habit happen. So, for example, with me, let's say my kid does something, I'm like, hey, Zach, stop that. Well, in that moment, let's say, oh, I don't want to scream at my kid ever again. So in that moment, I could take action to change the habit. So undo it by one, looking at it, two, changing it. So instead of saying, oh, Zach, I'd be like, oh, buddy, how are you doing? I see you spilled mommy's coffee. That's no problem. Enjoy that. Let me, let's daddy clean that up. Okay. So in that moment, I changed my reaction to a more positive reaction. And anytime you're not feeling good, every time you feel angry, jealous, sad, uh, depressed, incomplete, whatever it is, every time you get one of those feelings, it's an action moment. It's a moment to take action to have these feelings not happen again, okay? And the reason that we have feelings is not because of what's happening outside of us, but it's how we, we are reacting or we are, how we are perceiving what's happening. Ready? So that's number, that's number 13. Number 14 uh, is the importance of writing things down. Not typing, but writing with your hands. There's something called neural pathways. What these are is as you begin to do different things or as you do things, they, uh, the more you do them, they form like, you know, in, in the forest. Like if you, if you get on a path, the path is formed because a lot of people walk there over and over. If you want to form a new path, you have to start brand new where there is no path and start walking. But guess what? That's how a neural pathway is formed. So when you start new habits and you start doing new things, it's like a, a new path in the, in the bush. And it's going to be a little tough to keep, to keep doing every morning. But as soon as you, you form that pathway in the mind, 
there is a uh, uh, an electron neutron uh, a message can pass down that pathway so you get up in the morning and guess what that pathway is functioning you can do that you go on the two mile or five mile run because you've been doing it for three weeks and, a, and, a, and your brain has changed physically and your subconscious mind has now has a new program okay so when you write stuff down it helps form those pathways quicker because in writing we are expressing our language in the form of art which is handwriting and that sticks in the head quicker than typing or typing because this here even though our eyes see letters our fingers are just pressing spots and our fingers do only a specific group of movement but when you write whoop, 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 you are forming the letters you are joining it you are creating a story and image in your head so it causes whatever you're desiring or whatever you're writing to really stick in there and to really be a complete image in your subconscious mind last but not least is to understand atoms and frequency okay really do some research into quantum physics quantum mechanics because when we go at the quantum level we realize that uh, we can observe how love works. Okay, there's an invisible force holding stuff together. What is that? We don't know. <laughs> Scientists are afraid to call it God's, they call it the ether, they call it the field, um, they call it energy. Whatever it is, it's there and it's what's holding your body together. It's what's holding your table together, the tree together. What it is, it's an it's a, it's a invisible software or instruction that is given uh, by the spirit or the invisible. So the invisible gives atoms or molecules that we could see and even ones we can't see instructions as to how to behave and what to do little experiment they did they took some beet sand and in this beet sand there was a particular bacteria or crustacean or whatever that formed in the sand always so what they did they got some sand they purified it with boiling hot water distilled water and they put it in a vacuum so it's completely clean only sand in there and what they found was that the creature still came to be from where <laughs> okay where did it come from well we know where it comes from okay there is an instruction in the ether for that creature to be formed in the sand so if you even though you clean the sand and there is no life to reproduce the ether, the spirit, the force, the God force is there to, boop, to give it life or to, to pop it into the reality that we see. Okay, so understand a little bit about atomic, um, at the subatomic level, the quantum level, because then you start seeing how the law of attraction works. Then you start seeing how what we consider reality or possible is just an illusion. Okay, so this is the introduction. I know it's a pretty long video. It had to be pretty comprehensive because this is video number one to bring you into what top 15 would, would be about. The rest of the videos are going to be seven minutes long, a lot shorter, but this is the, this is the foundation. Okay, this list is not done. Okay, there's a lot more down here beyond 15, but I'm introducing to 15 because this channel is top 15. Okay, this is from the book, Do It Now. Okay, so we're developing processes to, to get people to achieve their dreams in a heartbeat okay and the achievement occurs right in your head you get the feeling of oh I have it I own it and then because you see the process of getting it okay just like filling a bottle under a tap you see it empty but then you see the water going and be like oh it's going to be full in a couple seconds see there's no doubt and similarly we have developed a process that you can see that happening in your own life okay so this is Thorn Holder from Dream Designs bringing you our first episode of Top 15 Advice. You have a pleasant evening.